Chapter 10 Magic Beyond Magic The day rose beside Sandola's cottage, open pure and white, in the early dawn, when Teacher Dodd and Kandima prepared to slip away for their long climb up the mountain to Duran Village. The day rose would be pink at noon and red by sunset. Kandima picked one of the white blossoms and fastened it to the bohangan where Tuan had packed all of her things. The day rose is just like this day is going to be, Kandima said. It will get more bright and beautiful every hour. Goodbye, little one, Tuan turned Kandima's face up to his as he had done on that night when he first saw her hurt eye. Your face is sweet and beautiful again, and you are clean and healthy. Be a good, obedient girl. I will come to Duran Village one of these days soon. The Tuan sighed. Why do you sigh? Dodd lifted Kondima's bohangan to his back and slipped the holding strap over his forehead. A wonderful thing has been done. The village people will be astonished, and the parents will be beside themselves for joy. I know, I know. Tuan laid his hand on the teacher's shoulder. I am not thinking of Kandima, but of the thousands of children who suffer such terrible hurts with no one to care for them or help them. Then the smile came back to the gray eyes, and he walked with the travelers to the curve of the hill. Down in the town they caught a red bus, which delivered them at the place where the jungle trail began. All day they climbed, and the day rose on the Bohangan turned from pale pink to deep rose and then to red. Are we almost home? Kandima had asked her eager question for the hundredth time. Do you see that green hill with the tall tree standing higher than all the others? Dodd had loosened the bohangan and set it beside the path. Now he pointed across the valley. That's home. Kandima looked at the distant hill. Come on, let's hurry. I want to get there before sundown. She scampered along so briskly that Dodd had to call her to slow down. What kind of medicine did they give you in Singapore? You have been running ahead of me all day. I never saw a child who could run up a mountain the way you do. Kandima laughed. I guess they cured me of all my sicknesses, and I feel so good inside. I want to run and laugh, and of course I want to see father and mother and Chaya and Bani and the new baby. At last the travelers came to the edge of the clearing where the path came out of the jungle. No one had seen them coming. But now a great shout burst forth. Kandima comes! Kandima comes! Mukut tore along the path between the huts like a wild creature, screeching the news to everyone. In an instant the village sprang to life. Men, women, and children tumbled from every door and raced one another to the top of the hill. Kandima had waited a long time for this moment. Teacher Dodd seemed to sense its importance. He lowered the bohangan and the two stood waiting while the eager crowd of villagers rushed towards them. Wonderful, wonderful, the people exclaimed in loud voices as they pressed close to Kandima. Look, the awful eye is completely cured. It is as good as new. Wonderful, wonderful. Mother burst into tears, while father stood trembling with joy. Chaya danced, and Mukut bounced here and there and everywhere, yelling for no reason at all. The villagers' amazement exceeded anything Kandima had imagined. None of them had dared to hope for a miracle like this. Oh, see her beautiful clothes, Elijah shouted. I never saw such clothes before. 
Do all the Tuan's children wear such things? How fat you are, Kukut's daughter screamed. They must have fed you the best rice in the world. Everyone talked in a loud voice. In their excitement, they seemed to have a need for yelling in order to reassure themselves that what they saw would not turn out to be some magic that might disappear. What is in the Bohangan? Mukut's mother asked. Have you got more clothes in there? Kandima stood in the midst of the shouting villagers with a feeling of pure delight. They felt of her plump arms. They turned up the hem of her pajama trousers. They stroked her hair. They pinched her cheeks. And most of all, they examined with keenest interest her new eye. Can you see out of your eye as well as you ever did? One of the village fathers peered right into her face. For answer, Kandima lifted her hand and with a quick movement flipped her glass eye out into her hand and held it out for all to see. The astonished people fell back in surprise and fear. They knocked one another over in their fright. Magic beyond magic, they had never seen anything like this. Kandima's merry laughter rang out loud and clear in the evening air. She laughed until tears ran down from her good eye. Mukut recovered himself first and again ventured to draw near this miracle of miracles. The roguish Kandima slipped the eye back into its place again. Kandima, do that with your other eye, he demanded. Kandima only laughed again, and the happy people crowded around her, and together the whole glad company came down the hill to the village. No one in Duran village ever forgot that evening of Kandima's return. Her father's house could not hold the people, so Teacher Dodd asked all of them to come to his cottage. By much crowding they managed to get in. Everyone had many questions to ask. But the contents of the Bohangan were the center of interest for all the small folks. As Kandima took each toy from its wrappings, she told a story about it. Everyone rocked with laughter as she told of her fright at her first sight of a red bus. This little girl is very tired, Teacher Dodd began to put the toys back in their cartons. We must all go home to bed, and tomorrow we will hear more about Kandima's travels. At her own house, Kandima cuddled and admired her new baby brother while Mother looked on with shining eyes. Then she crawled under the mosquito curtain with Chaya. Chaya is my dolly that Mukut gave me still tied to the beam. Chaya lifted the mosquito curtain and climbed up to the roof beam. She untied the precious bundle and brought it down to Kandima. Kandima had taken the dolly Ellen in her arms. With great tenderness, she gathered her other baby to her breast. Surely you won't want that ugly old thing now that you have a nice new baby from the city. Chaya scowled at the wooden doll. I love both of them the same, Kandima held the dollies close. God loves all of his children the same, and so do I. She laid them down side by side and drew a corner of the red blanket over them. Tuan loved me when my eye looked so terrible. Even the sailor in the big boat cried out when he saw my eye, just like Mukut does when he is scared. The two girls and the two dollies snuggled under the red blanket and slept. Early the next morning, Kandima took a big bar of yellow soap and piled a bundle of clothes onto a flat basket. She balanced it on her head and went down to the spring. Two or three village women had already come to the pool. With amused smiles, they watched Kandima spread her small garments on the flat washing rock and began to scrub and beat them. 
she paid no attention to the women, but worked until the small mound of dresses, panties, and rosebud pajamas looked clean and fresh again. She stood up, put both hands on her hips, and said, Not even Sandoli could wash them better. Back at the hut, she brought a length of rotten and fastened it between the corner of the house and the durian tree. On this stout line, she hung her washing. Mukut came to watch. He even helped a little with fastening the clothesline. You are clever to think of drying your clothes like this, he said. If you tried to spread them out on the grass, the pigs would probably eat them up. It seems to me that more pigs than ever before are living in this village. Kandima eyed one of the razor-back swine, which rooted and grunted under Kukut's house. There has been a big fight about the pigs, Mukut told her. Gulan has got more of them than anyone else, and all the men say that they will not get rid of their pigs until he does. Every morning, Kandima carried her washing to the spring, and she soaked, rubbed, pounded, and wrung until every piece looked clean and white. She remembered how the nurses' white uniforms had looked in the house of sickness. She remembered Sandoli and her beautiful washing drying on the hill at the house of the children. She had long ago made up her mind that she would never be dirty again. The village women laughed at her. Who sees you, Kandima, to make you so particular about your clothes? I see myself, she told them, and I can smell myself. Kandima had grown so much on her long trip to the great city that she stood almost as tall as her sister Chaya. I wonder if you can't wear my new dresses too. She held one of them up to measure it on Chaya, and her sister's happy smiles and the warm contentment in mother's eyes settled the matter. Kandima gave Chaya half of her clothes, but she kept the rosebud pajamas for herself. She gave Mukut a book of colored pictures, a kaleidoscope, the stuffed elephant, and a small red bus. He had never imagined such wealth and he became Kandima's devoted follower. Nor did Kandima forget Elijah, and baby Banny could be seen any day running small trucks and motor cars over the rough bamboo floor of the hut. Kandima showed him how to make the proper sputtering and snorting noises that went with the movements of such toys. Kandima's visit to Singapore enriched the whole village, teacher Dodd remarked. She is the lesson book from which all the people are willing to read. Elder sister, Kandima called at the door of Kokut's daughter. Come in, child, the young woman greeted Kandima with friendliness and affection. Kandima sat down cross-legged on the mat with Kukut's daughter and watched as she slowly fashioned a winnowing basket from strips of bamboo. Tell me, Kandima, Kukut's daughter looked straight into her eyes, what kind of medicine did these people in Singapore use to make your eye well again? They made me go to sleep, and when I woke up, the bad eye was gone. Then after a long time, they put the new eye in where the old one had been. Then Kandima related the marvels of the house of sickness in Singapore. Her story always thrilled the village people, and they urged her to tell it again and again. Do you, do you remember how I have always hated the white man's medicine? Kukut's daughter said earnestly. I am sure now that the stories I have heard are false. Will you follow the Jesus teaching, elder sister? Kandima leaned forward. It is Jesus who makes the people in the house of sickness so kind. Jesus makes the Tuan and Dodd kind too. And Jesus makes the house of children happy. I am sure he can come into any house and make it bright and happy. 
Then Kandima told Kukut's daughter of the beautiful Sandoli and how she clasped her hands every morning and evening to pray. She told of the clean and cheerful little cottage. It is the pigs, she finally said. My husband Golan loves the pigs and he will not give them up. If it were not for the pigs, we would follow the Jesus teaching. But with the pigs around, we are always dirty and we cannot be clean people. That night, Chaya and Kandima lay awake for a long time trying to think of some plan to rid the village of pigs. But both girls fell asleep without making any decision. After all, what could two little girls do against a hundred pigs?